when you listen to the words and the teachings of people who become fantastically wealthy, you'll notice that a lot of the things that they teach, their philosophies, their teachings, their, their core philosophies are the same things that can make you fantastically in shape and fantastically fit if you apply their mindset tips to your fitness journey. In this episode of the podcast and first episode of the series, I'll outline some millionaire mindset hacks to help you become your healthiest, fittest, and best self. Tune in and take notes. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we hear and learn from our coaches, CrossFitters, and Glen Ed community leaders. Now, here are your hosts, Dallas and Greg. What's up, guys? It's Coach G. I'm one of the coaching team here at CrossFit Edwardsville. And in this podcast, we try and give you guys the short, easy, easily actionable tidbits that you need, the mindsets, the strategies to go out and actually be your healthiest, be your best self, to look your best, feel your best, perform your best, be your best athlete self. And in this specific episode of the podcast, I'm going to synthesize some millionaire mindset tips that you can take from the world of wealth building and apply it to building in a massive, incredible storehouse of health and fitness and wellness that will allow you to live a long, happy, high quality of life. So without further ado, let's get into it. Tip number one, taken from people of fantastic wealth, your calendar equals your priorities. Or to put it another way, show me your calendar and I'll be able to tell you what your priorities are. This is a a mindset tip that speaks to the power of putting things on the calendar. If we look at your calendar and we actually see that you have time blocked out at consistent, dependable intervals for you to go and do workouts or do meal prep or have proper sit down at home meals, we know that you're probably going to be incredibly successful with your healthy living journey. The flip side of this, of course, is if we look at your calendar and it's all your kids' sporting events, it's all work meetings, half of which you know are ridiculous nonsense and a meeting that shouldn't happen in the first place. If your calendar points to constant hemorrhage of time into things that are less important than your health and your wellness, that we also know your priorities are screwed up and you should revisit your priorities and then plug them into your calendar. This is a key, a core concept that has been one of the things that would separate people who succeed long-term with their health and their fitness and those who fail with their health and their fitness. Number one, your calendar equals your priorities. Number two, What gets measured gets managed. This is a Peter Drucker quote, I think, and it's a principle or a a tenet of effective leadership that you need to track and measure the things that are the most important variables. In Stephen R. Covey's book, um, it's in his in the sequel to the 10 habits of the seven habits of highly effective people. They talk about wildly important goals and having a compelling scoreboard for business key metrics to know what your key metrics are, track them and create a compelling scoreboard that in the business world keeps people's eyes on the prize and keeps them acting in ways that are incentivized to win the game, get points on the board. You can take this same idea and principle and apply it to your fitness. At the simplest level of execution, this might be how many times did I exercise this week with a minimum acceptable standard, maybe being three workouts this week. If you actually track this and have a scoreboard for it, you're much more likely to be consistent with hitting at least those baseline metrics each week. Conversely, if we 
have no way of tracking your fitness progress. We don't track your strength in a tangible, meaningful, quantifiable way. We don't track how many workouts you do each week. We don't have ways of testing or tracking your endurance, your stamina. Then similarly, those things will fall to the wayside and eventually won't be a priority, eventually won't be a thing that happens at all. One of the cool things with the CrossFit protocol is that we actually track all of our data on all of the things. We track strength numbers. We have metrics for endurance and stamina, cardiorespiratory endurance, metrics for flexibility, speed and power, agility, coordination, balance, and accuracy. And as such, we can actually track progress made on those things. We can actually track, and we do track, Attendance patterns. If you're one of our CrossFitters, we know how frequently you're here doing workouts each week. And if you go missing, somebody reaches out to you. All of these things are major differentiators in people who are very successful with their health and their fitness and those who are not. So take a cue from Peter Drucker. What gets measured gets managed. Actively track the things that are important to you in your health and your fitness, whether it be strength measures, endurance measures, body composition measures, and the like. Let's go to point number three, having a culture of accountability. It is no secret that when you have accountability to someone for showing up to the gym, for showing up to you know family dinner, if you have accountability, you have a coach that holds your feet to the fire in terms of healthy eating, for example, you will absolutely follow through at a higher level. You will execute at a higher level. This is related to the concept of you become the five people you hang out with the most. There's really fascinating data that I just learned from uh, YouTuber and businesswoman Cody Sanchez that simply being in proximity of people who are more successful than you pushes your performance output up by 15 percent versus being in the proximity of people who are lower performers than you reduces your performance measures by 30 percent shocking data that actually points to the power of accountability to people around you and this is not something that we say I actively have accountability in myself for the things that I do in my relationships, in my business, in my health and my fitness. I actually take this medicine myself, even though I've got years and years and years of experience and some pretty solid discipline, I still recognize that it's just easier to stay the course and do the things that I know that I should do if I have accountability to someone like a health coach, a nutrition coach, a fitness coach, a jujitsu coach, whatever. If I have that accountability, I'm more likely to follow through. And so are all the rest of us. We're humans. Having a culture of accountability around you makes you a more successful person, including in the arena of your health and your fitness. So if you want to be more successful long-term, find people who will hold you accountable for doing your workouts, eating in a healthy way, and doing the day in, day out rituals and behaviors that lead to that long-term success. So in this first episode of the series, Millionaire Mindset Fitness Tips Part 1, first tip, your calendar equals your priorities. Number two, what gets measured, it gets managed. And number three, culture of accountability. All of these are key ingredients that can make you very, very wealthy or make you very, very fit, in shape, healthy, happy, and whole. Hope you take these things and put them into action. If you have any thoughts, any feedback, your own responses to this, please post in the comments below. We'd love to talk to you more about these things. For now, we thank you for the gift of your time and your attention, and we'll see you guys in the next episode of the podcast. For now, Coach G out. 